Okay, so so there is a there is a one tricky thing I haven't said yet. Uh, I haven't talked about yet. So in the beginning, at the we, we solve this equation from the stagnation point, right? At the stagnation point, what is UE? Zero. Zero, right? So we can't really start solving this equation from the stagnation point. So the fact that U e equals zero means, and while d theta squared dx is, it has to be finite, right? That means what? I mean, we, we know at the stagnation point that theta is actually relatively constant, right? So, so d theta squared dx is definitely finite. And U e is equal to zero, what, what does that mean? Well, it, it means this thing has to be equal to zero, right? So stagnation point, Stagnation point. We start the solution with with uh, two point six five lambda equal to point two two five. That's how we start the solution, and that gives us a particular lambda, right? And this particular lambda combined with whatever du e dx we know at the leading at the stagnation point is going to give me a initial theta star, uh, initial theta squared to start my solution. So from that, from that initial condition, then I can solve this equation forward. Uh, not sure if I have time to do it this lecture, but at least let's get the initial condition sorted out, all right? So again, let's try to solve the same uh, UE profile as we have from last time. So what we have is uh, uh, C is equal to, let's just, just uh, make a link space of from 0 to 10 and uh, let's use 100 points to to start okay and uh, uh, so let's for example set new to be 10 to the minus 5 all right so we are going to start by uh, saying that I want to start by calculating lambda so lambda 0 is going to be point Two two five divided by two point six five, right? Okay, so that's my initial lambda zero, and and that is going to give me a uh, so due dx. So let's say due is equal to one minus exponential of minus c. So that's a boundary profile of one of your choices, right? Okay, so my due dx is going to be exponential of minus c. All right, so that's what we have as a boundary layer profile. So lambda 0 is going to be equal to that. It's going to give me an initial condition for theta square. So let's use theta square as the variable we are solving here. Um, so that's due dx at 0 divided by lambda Sorry, it's lambda times nu divided by du e dx. Theta square is equal to lambda 0 divided by uh, times nu divided by du e dx at the beginning. So if we run that, uh, did I run that? Okay, so I have a theta, theta two at, at the leading at the leading edge, right? So this is uh, this is uh, uh, presumably we have uh, we probably have a kind of a semi something like a semi elliptical shape that corresponds to a UE is equal to one minus uh, one times e to the minus x. Right, so at the leading edge, uh, the boundary layer thickness is like uh, 10 to the minus 6 meters. So here now we are in the dimensional world because we, ha we have a new, right? All right, so very leading edge, very, very thin boundary layers to start with. So now we start integrating this equation forward. So d theta dx, uh, we cannot, again, we cannot do this explicitly near the leading edge, right? Near the leading edge, this ue is very, very small. And uh, uh, 
starting from the leading edge, it'll cause problems. So let's perform an implicit time integration. All right. So an implicit time integration is going to give us what? Uh, so first, uh, I want to compute my lambda. My lambda uh, is going to be equal to theta square over nu times due dx, right? Okay. So if I if I perform a finite difference discretization of this equation, what I'm going to get is uh, uh, theta square at i plus one minus theta square i divided by delta x is going to be equal to two nu over u e. Let's again use the backward Euler method. So it's a uh, i plus one point times a linear combination of lambdas. So it'll be minus 2.65 lambda, which in this case is theta square nu, is it nu? Uh, right, due dx plus 0.225. All right, so are those at station i plus one? This is at station i plus one, that's right. So I'm also going to write i plus 1 here. All right. So what we are going to do is we are going to be moving all the knowns to the right-hand side and all the unknowns to the left-hand side. So what are the unknowns in this equation? This is unknown, right? And uh, this whole term is going to be involving an unknown. And uh, so these are the unknowns. Uh, the knowns are the ith is already known and this is known. So the right hand side is going to be theta i square delta x and plus 0.225 to nu over ue i plus 1. Right? And the left hand side, which is unknown, is theta i plus 1 square. That is actually the only unknown here. I have 1 over delta x and uh, plus this guy. Plus, uh, so 2 times 2.56. Uh, the news cancel. And I have over new, the theta i square is moved outside and due dx at i plus 1. Parenthesis. So basically what I need to do is to divide this onto the right hand side to calculate uh, theta i plus 1 square, right? So uh, I'm running out of time, so let's do that first thing next lecture, right? So, so that we have a, a good code for calculating the evolution of theta for an arbitrary outside boundary layer profile.